Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a while, I know there's been some changes, and I know there hasn't been hardly any output, any content from me. Um, there's some pretty good reasons for that. Uh, over the summer, I've been dealing with uh, my mom's advanced dementia, and uh, subsequently uh, she passed away here a couple weeks ago, so I spent most of the summer dealing with that. Uh, before that, it was all the Rona, and um, while we're still dealing with the Rona up here in Michigan, the state is pretty well still locked down pretty tight. Anyhow, I decided to do a little video today on the 2013 Malibu. Um, I have uh, posted some of this on Instagram, uh, this car on Instagram. I did not do any videos on this car because I was dealing with my mom and the Rona and all that. Um, so it kind of got done on the slide, but I want to give you a little look at it now that she's done. She's a 2013 uh, Malibu LT from Copart, and it was a deer damage. Um, deer hit the front, so it took out the bumper, the headlight, the fender, the door, the door, and then um, all kinds of stuff underneath as well. Um, there was also a dent in this fender right about here that um, I just went ahead and replaced the fender. The, uh, the big challenge with this car was that the paint code for the 2013, which I believe is a 106P Atlantis Blue Metallic, changed in 2014. They went to a darker hue, so even if you had blended it, it wouldn't have matched. So I ended up having to paint this entire car. And that was a, a job and a half, but it actually came out really decent. Um, there's some mistakes if you look uh, really close, but, uh, you know, who's telling? Anyhow, it was my first time painting a whole car, and I think it came out pretty well. But the subject for today's video is the hidden compartments of the Chevy Malibu. Um, this kind of car is kind of neat, and as I got further into it and further into it, they have a lot of little hidden compartments, and we're going to go over them. So, uh, first of all, we're going to start in the front here, and everybody is pretty well familiar with the center console, and not only does this little roll-up thing cover your, your drink holders, but we open this up, and we have our center console area. We've got a uh, USB in uh, right there, and a 12-volt port next to it. The USB actually will hook up to the... Um, the stereo system and you can play Pandora through it but um, I noticed that this car has like a ton of little compartments like there's a little compartment there and there's one on the other side that's perfect for a cell phone if you look in the doors doors go way back you can slide like a big water bottle in there or stand a cup up there there's all kinds of these little um, cubbies here and there the really cool one is this one the radio lifts up, the radio head lifts up, and there's a nice little uh, storage spot in there. I keep my insurance and registration papers in there, and I keep my sunglasses in there when we're not when we're not uh, wearing sunglasses. There's also the actual glasses container up here, which has my regular glasses in it. And of course, we have the regular big spacious glove box. So I thought that was about it, and then one day I was um, fooling around with the car, and I happened to notice there was a, a latch over here, and I was like, what the heck is this? And uh, now granted, this is after I've had the car for about three months. And I open it up, and we have another little compartment. So nice little hidden compartment there. And then this was the actual really sneaky one on their part. If you lift up right here, this pulls up. And down below is a true hidden compartment and you can hide all kinds of stuff in there when I was cleaning out the car I actually thought you had to get to it by pulling out that uh, plastic piece there and sliding your hand underneath and I was like you know I spent like an hour fishing change I, f I fished about five dollars worth of change out of there um, little did I know that all you had to do is lift the cup holder up and that just snaps back into place that shuts down um, I think that's it for up here in the back. They've got another little uh, pin compartment. 
Well, we've got our, our seat backs to store stuff in and then uh, the center seat flips down. And in here there's another little hidden gem where you can store stuff. So I thought it was kind of interesting that this car has a ton of little compartments, a ton of little hidden things. Um, the bad news is that it's a ton of little places to leave stuff when you sell the car and actually the a couple of the things uh, up in the glasses container, uh, I found a pair of prescription glasses from the previous owner. I managed to track her down and get a hold of her and I ended up sending those back along with a few other items I found in the car. And in return, she sent me the itemized estimate um, from the body shop on this car. And it turns out that me going through it and finding everything that I thought was wrong with it, they found the same things. And the only thing we disagreed on replacing was they uh, wanted to replace the ABS, or not the ABS, the uh, airbag module. And I know on most GM cars, if you fix the faults, fix all the airbags, you don't even need to reprogram it. It will reset itself and the light will go off. And then of course there are some codes stored and I ended up clearing the codes and we're good to go. So that was like a $900 um, item that they added into their estimate that I didn't, I didn't change. Everything else, we were pretty well one-on-one -on -one as far as what needed to be replaced, except for that right fender. Um, they did not, I don't think it was part of the accident, so they didn't replace it. So I ended up um, replacing the fender with a, a junk air fender and, and we painted it up and, and everything looked good. So the next step, I'm out here today taking pictures of it. It's finished, it's gonna go up for sale here in about an hour. Um, once it sells, we'll go over the numbers for it. Uh, this was one of those cars that I probably shouldn't have gotten into, but uh, it did serve a really good purpose. Um, going to visit my mom every day in hospice required me to drive 55 miles one way, and this little 2.5 liter four banger uh, really served me well. It didn't eat up a whole lot of gas. The car was comfortable. It was very hot this summer here in Michigan. The air conditioning worked really well. Listening to Pandora over the, the car stereo worked really well. It does have Bluetooth, but it's Bluetooth for the phone only in this model year. So you can use the Bluetooth um, for your phone, hands-free calling, hands-free everything. But as far as like interacting with Pandora, unless you buy the, uh, the Wi-Fi subscription, and these are available with navigation and Wi-Fi, um, you can't actually use a Pandora app just on the radio. It does have it, but you can't use it without hooking up to your phone through the USB cable. Um, other than that, this car's been a great little car. I've put about 5,500 miles on it, so we daily drove it for a while, and um, I really kind of hate to see it go, but it's time to sell it and move on to the next project. We are going to start uh, be, to be taking this channel a little bit more seriously. Um, and you may wonder why the name has been changed to Resurrection Auto Rebuilders. Um, we're going to start by getting an LLC in that name. And um, it's already actually already in the process. And we're going to turn this into kind of a business with the ultimate goal of getting a used car dealer's license so I'm not limited to six cars a year. Lately, though, I haven't had to worry about that because there's no way I've had the time to do more than six cars a year. But hopefully we're going we're gonna to ramp that up and um, we're going to get things going. We'll get a business, um, you know, a, a legal business going and then we'll work on uh, the used car dealership uh, license, which um, it's going to be a little tough, but it's not insurmountable. So anyhow, that's where I've been. I hope you all have been doing really well. Uh, right now, I'm kind of nursing a back injury. So um, once again, I'm off work and um, just trying to tidy up a few loose ends. But um, it's good talking to you. Stop back in, monitor your um, post notifications, and hopefully we'll get some more content out here shortly. One of the things that we're going to be working on, not only am I going to go out and pick up another project car after this one, but we're going to be redoing the engine in the 2009 Saturn Outlook that uh, I picked up in December with a salvage title down in Ohio. I've decided to pull the engine out of it. We're going to tear it down. We're going to send it to the machine shop and we're going to make it just like brand new. And that's going to turn into my daily driver. And, and I've kind of decided to keep that car with the way insurance goes these days the price of newer cars versus older cars. It's better to have an older car 
that is reliable that you've put some money into versus buying a newer car because full coverage especially with my deductibles um, it almost is unaffordable when it, it gets into the the uh, 2018 2019 2000 you know 2020 cars so that's what's up for the channel i hope you uh, go along you know come along on this journey with me uh, starting this business and getting these cars going and eventually becoming a used car dealer and then we're going to start flipping cars pretty regularly because uh, you can go to the used car auctions then and you don't have to buy wrecked and rebuilt um, we'll just have to buy them from the auction fix up what's uh, wrong with them and then we'll put them out and uh, sell them my, my goal is to sell good quality used cars to people who really need a good solid ride you know uh, there's a lot of dealers out there that'll slap and slap and tickle and and just try and maximize their profit um, I don't mind putting the money and the effort and the time into the car when I when I sell a car everything's right with it um, as, as much as it can be um, and still you know kind of make money usually if there's a question oh do I do I put this part on it then I usually will uh, usually it's tires well you know there's a little bit of tread left I always put new tires on now these this car has a nice uh, new set of coopers on it so I don't have to do that this time with this car so it saved me a, a bunch of money there but I spend a bunch of money elsewhere thanks for stopping by I hope you all are doing well and we'll see you on the next one peace out